Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. This one's been a long time coming, but we are finally going to do it. I am running desperately low on iron. That's basically all the iron I have, <laughs> and I am kind of tired of it. So today we're going to make ourselves an iron farm. First of all though, I need to cook some food. I can't be going eating all of this leather. <laughs> so let's get some steak, and let's get to it. I found a little bit of iron tucked away in my ender chest, and we're going to need a few of those, but hopefully not too many. Fortunately for us, iron farms these days are pretty easy to make. We're just going to need three beds, a handful of building blocks, a flower pot, an iron cauldron, and the help of a couple of villagers. But we're actually not going to use the villagers that I've already cured over here at the main starter area that I've set up because moving villagers is a pain. And they would require moving because the best place in your world to build an iron farm is right next to your spawn point. I don't mean your spawn point is in the bed you sleep in, I mean the world spawn point where you first entered the world. And for many players that may be quite far away from where you decide to set up your base. If you are completely lost and don't know where to find the spawn point, the best way to do that is to craft a compass. Compasses in Minecraft do not point north. I believe that's north, the direction we're facing right now, and the compass is quite clearly pointing away from that. Oh, and before we do anything else, I'm going to quickly grab a name tag and rename it in an anvil. We're going to name tag it You Got Me, for reasons which will become clear in a minute. And now, following our compass, we're going to make our way over to the spawn area of the world. Now, in the average Minecraft world, that's going to be roughly the 0, zero coordinate. But that's not always the case, because some Minecraft worlds will generate with an ocean at the 0, zero coordinate, and the game typically tries to find a landmass in order to spawn you on, usually the closest one to that point, give or take a couple of hundred blocks. So now once we get a little bit closer to the area where we spawned in, this is all looking fairly familiar, the compass will start to spin more wildly to let us know that right here, I believe this very block right here, which is actually around negative 63, 16. This right here is the very block which began our world. This is the player's spawn point. So we are in the middle of a forest right now, and we need to clear a little bit of space near, but not directly on top of that spawn point. And there's a good reason for that, which we'll go into in future episodes. But for now, we're going to take down a few trees, and we're going to start clearing out a large flat area. This is also going to get us a very useful amount of wood that might come in handy for some of the other stuff we're going to do in this project. Okay, while we've been doing a little bit of landscape clearing here, the sun has been been setting, and I hope you're ready because you're about to see the smoothest way anybody has ever caught a zombie in Minecraft. We're going to dig a hole in the ground and we're going to set up a cauldron inside the ground. We're going to place a trap door on the cauldron facing out that way. We're going to put another trap door on the top of that. We're going to flip that open and place another trap door on the back there. And then we're going to put two stone blocks on either side of it, like so. And then we're going to find ourselves a zombie. Before it gets too dark, I'm also going to break out some of this wood so I can craft myself the three beds we're going to need. I might need one of those to sleep in in a minute, and we're also going to craft some wooden slabs. Now let's see, where is our zombie going to come from? There's probably a couple of them around, there might even be some in this cave. Oh, there's one now. Now we might not need to use the name tag at all, depending on whether or not this zombie can hold equipment, but it doesn't look like he can. So in this case, we're just going to have him wander back over to the area where we've set up the cauldron. Step right up, buddy. You are our first contestant. Let's see if you will take the bait. We're going to jump up onto this trap door. We're going to wait for the zombie to wander on in. He's going to jump into the cauldron and we're going to close the trap door on his head. Congratulations. We've caught ourselves a zombie. I'm going to remove all of the blocks from around him. And once he stops jumping, he's actually going to be trapped in here and he's not even going to know we're there. I can take away this trap door. I can walk right up to him and he's not going to attack me at all. Just make sure you don't open this trap door or he'll be able to walk right out of the cauldron and get you. And the reason he can't see is, is if we press F3 and B, you'll notice his line of sight is just underneath the lip of this trap door, meaning he can't quite look up and see the player as we're running around here. So <laughs> that's kind of hilarious, but that's not actually where we want him to be for now. We're going to put a couple of slabs above this zombie. But with the slab over his head, this guy is absolutely fine as the sun comes up. And that's why we got a name tag this guy, you got me, because folks, we sure did get him. The purpose of the name tag in this case is to prevent this zombie from despawning when we get too far away, because I need to run back to my base and prepare a couple more things. Also, note to self, in the next episode, talk about nether portals a bit more, because it's going to be tremendously helpful to have one of those at our world spawn. Anyway, back here at the storage system, we're going to briefly craft a piston, that way we can substitute the trapdoor over our 
zombie's head for something a bit more permanent. I'm also going to pick up some of my preferred building blocks, and I really need to harvest some more spruce wood soon. We're going to grab a couple of golden apples out of storage here, and we're going to brew up some splash potions of weakness, because we want to cure some zombie villagers. The last thing we're going to need is some dirt, and probably a lot of it. Okay, back at spawn, our zombie friend is still here, and we want to make sure that we can swap in a slab that is going to be basically a double slab like this. So a bottom half slab with a top half slab over it. And right now, the block space that above the zombie is being taken up by this trap door. So we're going to do a bit of piston substitution real quick. We're just going to find a button. We're going to attach that to the side of the piston, and bam, there we go. <laughs> One substitution has been made, and it looks like this zombie is absolutely fine in his cauldron. We can remove this slab here, the piston, the block, and yes, good, we still got him. Okay, now we need to do a bit of landscaping. I'm going to count three blocks away. I'm going to dig a little hole in the ground here, and that's actually where we're going to be leaving the three villager beds. Although right now I'm going to go and sleep in a tree somewhere because I can't sleep when I'm right next to a zombie. In the morning, we're going to put this bed back, and we're going to start removing a bunch of blocks around here. Note that we're not going to be removing the layer of blocks around the cauldron where the zombie is because he might just be able to step out of the hitbox of this cauldron and come and attack us. Instead, we are going to be flattening the ground all the way around here into dirt path which is something you can just do by right-clicking with a shovel. We don't need to have these two strips of dirt path either side here, but I'm, I'm working with a, a vibe. I'm working on decoration. What we are going to do is build up a little house of sorts around these three beds. We're going to make sure that it's got a wall all the way around the outside. We're going to put two more pieces of wood either side there. We're going to put these three stone slabs across the middle here, and we're going to place a flower pot on top of those. Then we're going to continue building up the walls around the outside. I'll run you through this quickly because it is very important. The cauldron the zombie is standing in is on the same level as the bed's in this room. And hopefully if we're able to capture and cure some zombie villagers, they're going to occupy these beds and seeing three beds nearby, they're going to breed a third villager between them. Now, seven blocks out from this box in which we've enclosed the beds, we're going to flatten all the landscape around here into dirt path. Basically, we want to make sure every block within eight blocks of these three beds, so that's seven including the walls around here for the eighth block, we need to make sure that these are all flattened out. What we're doing here is making sure that nothing can spawn on these blocks, and since dirt path is slightly lower than a full block, it doesn't count as a valid spawning space, either for hostile mobs or for the iron golems we're planning to spawn here. That does mean we are going to have to level out some of the terrain here, so we might do a bit of light terraforming in the process, but you'll probably find this whole thing much easier if you decided to build it in a slightly flatter location. So once we're done with the area, this is what it's going to look like. It's all pretty straightforward, actually. It really doesn't take all that long to do. Before night falls, I'm just going to remove these dirt blocks from underneath here and quickly fill those in with spruce planks because I kind of can't stand seeing the edges of these dirt blocks underneath the spruce walls. Okay, the sun is setting, the moon is rising, it's time to go on the hunt for some zombie villagers, and we're going to try our best to bring them back as close to this location as possible. Well, it's now raining, but that actually helped. <laughs> I was able to get a couple of zombie villagers across the river, and as day broke, the rain protected them from burning in the sunlight. So we have a zombie villager inside of here who is currently in the process of curing and another one inside of this box here. So the next step is actually going to be to cover up our regular zombie friend over here since the villagers are potentially going to freak out if they see a zombie too early. Villagers are, after all, programmed to run away from zombies if they see them, and we want to get them into this box, where, by the way, I have dug out a small trench behind the box for what we're going to do next. It seems like this villager has finished curing, so we should hopefully be able to let them out, although the main thing we want them to do is head over here towards this bed. So it might actually be worth waiting for the second zombie villager to cure and for night to fall. That way the villagers will aim to pathfind towards those beds, and it'll be much easier to get them in this enclosure. For the moment, I'm also going to grab one of these beds so that I can use it myself when I need to skip the night. And it sounds like our second villager has just finished curing in here as well, so these are our two iron farm candidates. I'm just going to set up a little walkway to make sure that they can pathfind nice and easily to the beds, but once night falls, they should cross this bridge and make it into their new home. Okay, the sun is lowering in the sky, so we should be able to let thing one and thing two out 
of their little boxes, and like clockwork, those green particles appear and the two of them make their way over to their beds. Honestly, villagers are a little bit easier to move once you understand their pathfinding. While they have no problem sleeping in close proximity to a zombie, at least right now, I have to sleep a little bit further away. And in the morning, we should find that these villagers stay inside this box. This is the most important aspect of this whole farm, really. The villagers need to stay in this enclosure, and that includes corner blocks. If they sleep in a bed for the night, it's possible that they can step out of the bed into any vacant corners, so fill those in. We're also going to add a torch in here just for the sake of lighting them up because we are about to put a roof on this entire thing. Before we do that though, I do need to make sure I put this third bed back in because I won't be able to access this area very easily once the roof is built over this. So over the top of this area with the villagers, we're going to build a 5x4 platform and that is where the villagers are going to be spawning us some iron golems. But naturally, we want to make sure the iron golems end up leaving this platform and heading into an area where they can be destroyed. If they are left to roam loose, they will almost surely destroy that zombie and all of our hard work will have been for nothing. So that's why we're keeping the zombie hidden for now and that's why I will need to make some fence gates. When the villagers choose to spawn an iron golem, it will spawn on any of these stone blocks, but iron golems are kind of big and bulky and so the fence gates out on either side here will actually help the iron golem spawn in and still be able to move by providing kind of like a half a block's worth of leeway. We're going to put four of them on either side like this. These are all going to be closed and on the back side of the build here we're going to have five in a straight line all opened up. Then for just the aesthetics of the build we are going to create a solid front wall of blocks here but hopefully any golems that spawn in here are going to be pushed around by the water. A row of water sources alongside these spruce blocks will all flow in this direction until the iron golem falls off into this pit and we're going to be digging this pit a lot further down. At the bottom of this pit is going to be effectively a lava trap that the iron golems are going to fall into and be burned and that's how they're going to drop their iron. But in order for the villagers in here to produce another iron golem as quickly as possible, the first iron golem they produced needs to be 16 or more blocks away in every direction. That's horizontally and vertically. So that will mean digging out this pit 16 blocks downwards from the area where we've got these beds. The area into which the iron golems are going to fall will look more or less like this. And we need to make sure we have some sort of access hatch on the outside so that we can get down there to receive the drops. Once the iron golems drop down here, we're going to be dropping them one stage further into a hole that's going to be four blocks deep. We're going to put two sides on either of these walls and then we're going to have a water bucket flowing from this corner just so that it tips the iron golems over the top and into this pit. And the key to this pit is going to be another set of four signs which we're going to apply to the walls like so and those are going to be holding up a blade of lava. The lava is going to be held at head height for the golems which is three blocks up from the ground and below that we're going to dig out an area here, place a double chest, we're going to have a hopper from this corner going into the double chest and a water bucket will be placed here like so, pushing all of the drops over the top of this hopper. We can block that off with a stone slab to make sure the water doesn't flow any further than that, and even though there's going to be lava around, these signs should be fireproof. This is why we're not using fence gates, because fences can be set on fire and signs cannot. Alternatively, you could use either of the wood types from the nether, either warped or crimson, since those are technically fireproof. We're going to fill in this wall right here, so all we have to look at is the chest here, and we're going to come back with a bucket of lava so we can set up that lava blade. And appropriately enough, I believe there is one lava source left here in our starter cave where we'd been mining out all the subsidian. There it is. I'm pretty sure that is the last lava in this original patch of lava that we found. So this is going to be put to very good use. So finally, we're going to dig out this area one more time. We're going to place our lava blade right here, and then we are going to cover that up with stone so none of the lava can reach us. So with the moon setting and the sun about to rise on the horizon over here, our next task is going to be to make sure that these two villagers want to breed. And for that, fortunately enough, some of the zombies we've been killing during these nights have dropped some carrots. 
carrots. So we can do a quick bit of carrot farming with all the bones we've been getting. All I've got to do is hoe a nice easy spot over here. We're going to pop the carrots in, get ourselves some bone meal. Might even hold the carrots in my offhand and just spam bone meal from my main hand just to speed things up a little. And before long, we basically have a stack of carrots. The two villagers are awake and we're going to fling some carrots in through the side here, which they should pick up. And hopefully when it comes to gossip time, when it comes to meeting time, they should be interested in breeding. We're going to back off for now. We can see the heart particles starting to form over there and pretty soon we should find a baby villager has appeared in that enclosure. Now, at this point, of course, it's important to make sure that there are plenty of blocks around the outsides because a baby villager is going to be smaller than these two and it's potentially going to be able to get out of any one block high gaps. <laughs> at this point, they are both juggling the carrots and attempting to feed the baby villager who is bouncing up and down on the bed. We just have to wait a little bit longer for the baby villager to grow up and then these three villagers will be able to produce some iron golems for us. The last thing we need to do in that case case is make sure that there are no solid blocks in the area which are not covered up by some other type of block or slab or something that would not be spawnable. And in this case, we need to make sure that we have some slabs on top of the wall of planks that I've built at the front of this platform here. Otherwise, that's going to be able to spawn iron golems on the top of the wall, which would be kind of disastrous. So I'm simply going to hop up here and make sure that doesn't happen with a row of slabs along the top here. And whilst the baby villager is busy growing up, we do want to double check our mats. We want to make sure that there are at least eight blocks between the villagers on top of the beds and anything that might be spawnable by iron golems. Basically, we want the iron golems to only spawn on this stone platform here. Okay, the third villager has grown up and with three villagers in here, it is finally time for this setup to start producing iron golems. So we're going to have to approach this next step a little carefully just to make sure that there are no valid spawnable blocks around the zombie before we're ready to spawn the iron golems in. So we're going to remove this block at the back here, make sure that is a dirt path. We're going to remove these two blocks either side here, make sure that's a dirt path. We're going to do the same on this side, make sure that's a dirt path. We'll take out this block here, shovel that one and remove this block and now the villagers should start to notice the zombie and you'll notice them running around in a bit of a panic an iron golem has spawned on the platform and immediately drops down into the pit where it's going to be set on fire by that lava and in 30 to 35 seconds depending on whether or not that bug has been fixed that changes the timing slightly another golem should spawn on this platform and the same thing will happen there it goes and unfortunately it's found the zombie oh gosh <laughs> yep that was not the outcome we wanted. <laughs> so we are going to need to catch another zombie, which shouldn't be too much of a problem. But it seems like what happened there is the golem ended up jumping off the corner here and landing on these blocks. So we're going to put in a few blocks of decoration just to make sure that doesn't happen again. But at the very least, I think another one of the things we can do is put another fence gate here and another fence gate over here. And that at least is going to make sure that the iron golems can't travel too far over in this direction. But now I'm just gonna carefully nudge this iron golem into the pit where it's gonna die in the lava and we can head down to the collection mechanism just to make sure that we're getting the drops from these golems. Yep, with that one burning in there, it looks like some poppies and some iron ingots have made their way into the chest. So that is good. That is proof that our iron farm concept works. So as night falls, I'm gonna block off this area here just so that we can shield the villagers from creating any more iron golems whilst we wrangle another zombie. I'm gonna perform exactly the same setup we did previously with the trap doors so that we can hop up onto there and we're gonna lure another zombie in this time foregoing the name tag i am gonna just try and find a zombie who can hold an item because if a zombie picks up an item dropped by a player that zombie will not be able to despawn let's see if this zombie wants to pick up my spyglass i think it'd be really funny if the zombie was holding a spyglass but unfortunately nope <laughs> it looks like this one isn't playing why don't any of these zombies want to pick up my spyglass <laughs> At last, we have a volunteer, okay? He was actually hanging around the iron farm as well, so that's kind of perfect. Let's make sure he gets on into the cauldron. Perfect, we got him. <laughs> he's in there. As before, we will need to make sure he's got a double slab above his head, and when the sun comes up, he won't burn in the sunlight. And he can use that spyglass to spy on the villagers, I suppose, but he won't be able to get to them. And I think just to make sure that our iron golems end up going into the pit, I'm gonna add a couple more decorations before the sun comes up. Right here, I'm gonna add a spruce log as a pillar just to make sure the iron golems are guided downwards into that hole. And to make sure they don't overstep these side walls at all, we're also gonna hop down here and we're gonna make sure we have some bottom half slabs 
placed along here like so. We're going to do the same thing here on the opposite side as well. And once again, I will impress upon you that at every stage in this process, we need to make sure that any decorative blocks we place are not spawnable. Okay, now we should be able to come down here and remove the blocks from in front of these villagers, and the villagers should once again start to panic and will immediately produce an iron golem. We just about caught him falling off the back there before he ended up down there in the lava. So once again, we're going to wait around for another 30 seconds just to make sure they do spawn another one. Yep, the next iron golem has spawned right on cue and it heads down into the pit perfect. Obviously there are a few aesthetic considerations like the fact that the wood pillar just ends there on a dirt block. We might do something about those or we might just ignore it. But this is now a bona fide iron farm and it really didn't take all that much setup. Effectively all we need is a spawning platform here for the iron golems, three villagers in a cell below it with three beds, a zombie nearby standing in a cauldron and this setup here where there is a top half slab shelf there, a flower pot on top of it. Oh, did that don't just take a bit of damage? I think it might have just spawned in the wall up there. That's totally fine. But yes, this row of slabs here with a gap underneath it and a flower pot on top is perhaps the most important aspect of this iron farm design. So now you might be wondering what the heck is actually going on here. <laughs> Why are villagers being forced to run around inside this pen with a zombie nearby who seems to be paying very little attention to them whatsoever? And why is that causing iron golems to spawn? Well, luckily for you, I've got an explanation of iron farm mechanics for you. In a naturally generated Minecraft village, you will always find at least one iron golem the first time you go there. They will generate along with the villagers when the game first generates the chunks that the village is in, the structures and everything come along with it. But in a village with a high enough population, you'll often find that other iron golems start to spawn. And it's not even necessarily got to be that high of a population, because when villagers get together to gossip, when they get together to talk at the end or the beginning of the day, if five villagers are meeting all together and they don't spot an iron golem within a 16 by 16 cube of them, that's 16 blocks across all axes, X, Y, and Z axes are checked. If they don't detect an iron golem within that range, they make one. Five villagers all gossiping together will instantly spawn an iron golem in the area if they don't see one, which is how come villagers don't become overpopulated with iron golems, because usually you'll find them strolling around the village center. But the other times villagers decide to produce an iron golem is when a group of them feels threatened, usually by a zombie or a pillager or any mob which has AI that's programmed to cause the villagers harm. Generally speaking, anyway, there are some exceptions to that, but realistically, zombies are really the ones that you need to be aware of because they are the easiest to catch and the ones that can't do villagers harm from a distance in the same way that pillagers can with crossbows. The requirements for villagers producing an iron golem at that point are reduced. You only need three villagers and they all need to be aware that a zombie is nearby and they can't do anything about that. Those three villagers, because they feel threatened by the zombie, will create an iron golem on a valid spawning spot somewhere nearby. So what we're doing here is taking advantage of those conditions. We trap three villagers in a box with a zombie nearby and they can always see the zombie. They'll start to run around like this and sooner or later an iron golem will pop into existence in the only valid spawning spaces nearby, which is this platform up here. In this panicked state, the villagers will check for an iron golem every 10 seconds. If they don't find an iron golem in that 16 block cube they're looking in, they will spend 30 seconds spawning another one. So part of the trick of this iron farm is to remove the iron golems that they generate from that 16 block radius as quickly as possible, and the fastest way you can transport an entity like this is downwards. Now unfortunately in observing this farm I've noticed a couple of minor design flaws. Whilst the iron golems will frequently spawn in the center and have no problems moving off the edge of the platform, it seems like they are getting stuck in those slabs on the sides because sometimes they will spawn on the very edges of these blocks, get stuck in the blocks surrounding them and it'll take a second or two for the golem to choose to walk towards a different block on the platform and that will start them moving down here. So the system will clear itself out if obstructions happen but it's going to do that slower than we'd like. But either way when those obstructions aren't in place these villagers are spawning an iron golem every 30 to 40 seconds which means if we head down here into this little chamber we'll be hearing iron golems burning down here pretty regularly but we already have a stack and a half of iron and we have that despite only having observed a few iron golems golems dropping off this platform and burning in the lava. Because this iron farm has actually been producing iron while I was away at the other village giving that explanation. And that is part of the reason we built this farm where we did. 
Since we are this close to spawn, we can basically guarantee that we are inside an area of the world called the Spawn Chunks. In your single player world, this area will stay constantly loaded as long as you are in the overworld. So regardless of where you are in the overworld, the chunks surrounding your world spawn point will stay loaded. In a single player world, if you travel to the nether or the end dimensions, then this area will unload. But on a multiplayer server, it stays loaded constantly, just in case any players log in to the overworld. And previously, I mentioned this video settings slider called simulation distance. This is basically the distance around the player that Minecraft has actions like mob AI take effect. You'll notice that if you get far enough away from mobs like sheep, eventually they just stop moving, they just kind of stand there stationary, and that is because they are outside of your simulation distance, even if they are within your render distance, and the game decides it doesn't need to activate the AI of those mobs, so they freeze in place until you get closer. So we can think of the spawn chunks as an area in which that simulation distance is constantly active. Everything in the spawn chunks is constantly being simulated. The AI on these is always active. And so these three villagers in the cell here will be detecting the zombie nearby and will be constantly spawning iron golems whenever we are in the overworld. Since this area stays loaded, they will be producing iron in perpetuity. And you might be thinking, that sounds like a pretty cushy deal. Why don't we do more stuff in the spawn chunks? Like, why don't we farm all of our crops here and whatnot? Well, that's because a lot of other Minecraft mechanics work very differently to this. If you're thinking about stuff like crop growth and copper aging and that kind of stuff, that is all based on random ticks that happen around the player in a radius, and those are not simulated by the spawn chunks while you are away. Those are always occurring around the player and only around the player in quite a wide radius, so the player doesn't really have to worry too much about being a little further away from your crop farms, but simply planting stuff in the spawn chunks and then walking away to another point in the overworld is not going to have these crops growing. So that's why the spawn area of your world is the ideal location to build an iron farm. And so you might be wondering about the specifics of this iron farm design. Well, this whole thing is set up so that the villagers will occasionally break line of sight with the zombie at night time, because the last thing villagers will need in order to generate an iron golem is sleep. And they only need to sleep very briefly. They need to enter a bed at least once every two in-game days. But if they're constantly panicking like this, the only way they will do that is if they temporarily do not see the zombie. And that's why the flower pot is so crucial to this setup. It allows for a point where a single villager can get behind the flower pot temporarily break eye contact with the zombie and get into the bed. Unfortunately for them, they realize once they get into the bed that the zombie can actually see them through this half block space we have left in the cell, and so they immediately get out of the bed and start panicking again. But crucially, that means that they have entered the bed at least once per night or so, and that means this farm can continue running around the clock because your villagers are always able to sleep. Now, if you're one of those people who gets into bed as soon as night falls every day in Minecraft, then you'll occasionally find that the rates of this farm slow down because one or more of these villagers was unable to sleep before you did. Naturally, since this farm is going to be running around the clock the rest of the time, you're going to be spending some time in caves every so often where you're not going to sleep for the night, and that will give your villagers ample time to make sure they've got all the rest they need to spawn more golems, but occasionally you'll find that the iron farm slows down a little bit. But that is pretty rare, and we have just got two and a quarter stacks of iron ingots out of this farm that we only assembled maybe 30 minutes ago, so this thing is producing pretty well at this point. I still need to do a little bit of drafting just to make sure I can still decorate the iron farm around here whilst making sure that we aren't obstructing the iron golem with any blocks. I suspect that we're going to have to use a few more fence gates just to make sure that they are guided down into the pit. Perhaps we can even rearrange the water sources so that they flow in towards the center and direct the iron golems slightly more towards the center of the farm instead of having them run parallel. Either way, either way, we should end up with this farm running around the clock and a healthy supply of iron coming from it. In fact, the first thing I'm going to do with all of this freshly supplied iron is expand the storage system we've got down there because I have a feeling I'm going to need a few more double chests. Well, folks, with a rich supply of iron now coming through and maybe a couple of design tweaks to make, but not much else we are going to wrap things up there thank you folks so much for watching this episode of the minecraft survival guide and hopefully you'll find ways you can adapt this iron farm to all of the different styles you want to build in in your worlds but for now that's going to be it from me thank you so much for watching my name has been pixorifs don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it subscribe if you want to see more and i'll see you folks soon take care bye for now